We're in a long streak of people who need no introduction. <laughs> Roger Nelson was at the Pear Lab in Princeton from 1980 to 2002. In 1997, he started the Global Consciousness Project. Is it forward? And he wants you to know that uh, although he retired from Princeton in 2002, his wife claims that he didn't really retire because of the Global Consciousness Project. So, Roger. Thank you and good morning, or as Bob says, whatever it is. These are wonderful long days. I want to talk about uh, basically the, what amounts to hard-edged, um, scientific, statistically-based uh, material, but I would like to uh, start by mentioning that this project uh, began because we were interested in consciousness. We were interested in the possibility that there is interconnection among people, that there might even be something that could be construed as a global consciousness. I won't prove or demonstrate that necessarily, but we have some very interesting results over time. Uh, I guess most importantly, I think we're able to show with clarity that there really is, as Gertrude Stein said, some there there. Uh, the odds are of uh, this being just chance is a uh, million to one or 10 million to one. Um, we have independent measures and they're correlated, they have correlated response uh, to these events. There's some structure in terms of distance, in terms of time, and uh, also in terms of uh, what you might think of as psychological qualities. There's a lot of structure where there shouldn't be any. This is what the uh, network looks like and has spread out over the world. You'll see a lot of concentration in the US and Europe, but we have tried to get a distribution that was big enough so we could ask questions about distance. The data flow through the internet to Princeton, and that's what the data look like when they're coming in. So we have to do a lot of processing uh, to make sense or make uh, find out whether they're in indeed is any kind of structure in the data. The, um, we look at each um, of the devices, which we often call eggs. They're, that's a node in the network. It's a random event generator with custom software. And if we look at them separately and then calculate an average of, of their accumulating deviation over time, it will look something like this black uh, summary trace. And it may look like this. In our formal experiments, we first define the event. We figure out, uh, we decide that there's an interesting event, something that might possibly affect uh, global consciousness, if you will, by, because it makes an awful lot of people feel the same emotions, uh, think the same kind of thoughts. So we uh, discover the event in the news, perhaps, and then uh, we uh, define the beginning and end and extract the data and do the calculations. So the experiment is done uh, in a, a hypothesis testing sense. We know um, ahead of time without looking at the data which data we're interested in. And uh, we often show, use these kind of figures to plot the result. They're really just a historical um, record of the duration of the event but this uh, point at the end is the point we're interested in in terms of a bottom line statistic for each of the events. Here, I'll just give you two or three examples and then get on to the you know, kind of analytic details. This is September 11th in the context of uh, a week of surrounding days. So we, if we look at, at the, our first prediction, really only encompassed four hours. That's the formal prediction and it was marginally significant. It was at the 0.02 level or something like that. Had we realized the magnitude and, and consciousness space, we might have said, let's look at two days. That um, effect in the data, data should look like what it looks like on the left, a, a kind of random walk with a level trend. And, and of course, you see, uh, when we examine over a longer period of time, uh, there's a tremendous uh, uh, persistence in the effect, a big deviation that's apparently associated with the feelings and thoughts that people had. This one is a completely different kind of event. This one uh, was a planned and organized, synchronized 
meditation, which we, as best we can tell, involved about a half a million people around the world. Uh, that's not a huge number in comparison to what 9-11 might produce. Nevertheless, there's a powerful deviation from the expected level trend. Here, another completely different kind of event, New Year's. We've now had 10 New Year's that we could look at. And the question, one of the questions we ask is, does the variability of the data uh, stay constant or does it de decrease? And as you can see, a few minutes before midnight, when people are beginning to think, uh, midnight's coming, I'm, I have to find my partner so I can get a hug or I have to get my glass ready so I can toast the new year and so forth. Uh, fairly uh, strong uh, evidence that there's even in an unimportant event, and this uh, coalescence of large numbers of people in a s similar direction or the same uh, interest can produce um, an effect on our random event generator network. This is a picture of the data over uh, almost 10 years. Uh, there are 250 events and the cumulative even though sometimes it's backwards, sometimes we're flat, sometimes there's no kind of effect, um, the tendency is for there to be an effect. It's relatively small, but the accumulation over such a large number of formal trials is highly significant with a z-score equivalent to five uh, plus standard deviations, um, million to one odds or smaller. The independent statistics um, are, we have names for them. We call one of them network variance or NETVAR, NETVAR and a second one which um, is called COVAR. They're really pair products in one case of z-scores and the other case of squared z-scores. One is more responsive to distance um, implications and one more responsive to uh, temporal um, interconnections in the data. If we plot those um, over time the, we see, and compare that with the kind of control data, the gray cloud is a thousand resamplings uh, from the database with the same, kind, the same event definitions except now they're just randomly, uh, pieces of data randomly extracted. Uh, that's a kind of background um, that we would, you expect from truly random data. All three, all, both of those measures or a combination of those independent measures show a pretty strong uh, difference. Here's another way to look at the independent uh, measure question. We created a random sample of pseudo events with a, an effect size equivalent to what we find in the database and that blue curve shows what happens not unexpectedly because we've constructed a, a powerful uh, large database of uh, small effect sizes. We get a, a peak z-score of seven or eight uh, standard deviations. Now the, ne the question is what happens if we, on these pseudo events, calculate the same uh, kind of, uh, the same, uh, do the same calculations, but now with our covariance measure, and the red trace shows that there's basically no, nothing there. This is, a, I think, a good demonstration of the true independence of these measures. Now going on to some of the other, the structure, we uh, see that if we move the event from its real time, slide it toward the future or toward the past, uh, we quickly uh, lose the, the high, high de uh, departure from expectation and, and, and uh, enter in a kind of random space. This also answers the question that some people ask, aren't there a lot of other spikes in the database? And this, in a sense, shows that the spikes associated with the events that are predefined are themselves spectacular. The correlation between the two measures is shown in the right-hand figure. Uh, they both uh, are centered on the time of the real event and if you move uh, the event artificially from either to the future or the past, uh, it changes. Another version of time structure. Um, this, by the way, I should, uh, I, I believe it was on the first slide, but much of this work is, uh, is uh, from Peter Bensell, who was here uh, at the SSC meeting and gave a pre presentation last year. He, um, um, in this case, looked at the correlation between our two independent measures. They both